number 37. And it's an honor and privilege to, to be able to preach to you tonight. And I really appreciate the opportunity to come and uh, give the Lord's Word to you. Um, my name is Brother Dean Carmichaels and my wife Lauren. We've been married for two and a half years. And we have a little boy coming in June. He's due on June 13th. Uh, Coburn James Carmichael. He'll be handsome like his daddy. But anyhow, we're uh, we're really excited. This is our first child. We're really excited. We're from Victory Baptist Church. We do the youth there. I graduated from Greensboro Bible Institute, and I preach at a radio broadcast out of Surrey County, uh, WYZDAM. I don't know if any of you know Brother Ricky Coffin, but um, that's us kind of in a nutshell there. But Genesis chapter number 37 tonight, the Lord's laid a message on my heart, and I'm not going to tell you the title until I'm at the end of my message. However, I'm going to preach seven main points tonight, and I'm going to uh, look at six of the garments uh, that Joseph wore, and I'm going to use that as an application to us as Christians today. And I want to um, preach mainly um, on the life of Joseph. If you ever want to um, read the entire text, my entire text is uh, 37 through 50, but I know we all got to go to work tomorrow, so I can't read all those verses. But anyhow, Genesis chapter number 37, if you would look at uh, verse number 1. It says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him, and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. I thank you, dear Lord, for this uh, good church, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for your presence that's felt here tonight, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, you'll touch me with your Holy Spirit, dear God. Give me the words to say, dear Lord. Fill me with the power from on high, Lord, even if there be just one person here tonight who needs this message. We say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, we, we look here in Genesis chapter number 37. And I want to use a verse out of the book of Galatians that says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, as I said earlier, I want to preach on seven main points tonight. And I want to look at six garments that Joseph wore in his life as an application for us as Christians. And my first point tonight, I want to see the garment, that, the garment he wore that was designed. Number one, the garment he wore that was designed. We see here in, in verse uh, number, number three, it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Now remember I said I'm preaching, I'm going to use a lot of application tonight. So when I refer to us as Christians, I'm not preaching interpretation, I'm preaching application. Now we see number one, the garment he wore that was designed for him. This represents, this garment represents the believer's change. This garment represents the believer's change. There is a garment that God has designed for us that He wants to put over us. That's the blood of His Son. He wants to cover our sins with the blood of His Son. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all Come to repentance. Amen. You look at the, the Word of God, you look at the book of, I believe it's the book of Samuel, I don't want to tell you wrong, but Samuel and Kings is written from man's perspective. The book of Chronicles is written from the viewpoint of God. And those other books are written from the viewpoint of man. Now, the entire Bible is inspired. But you look at David's great sin, and you look, I believe it's through Samuel, it says on your Schofield, it says David's great sin. And then we read in the book of Psalms how he said, Create in me a clean heart. Restore unto me the joy of salvation. Blot out my iniquity. But when you come to the book of Chronicles, written from the viewpoint of God, it does not mention David's sin. Why? Because God forgave David. 
You see, what Satan tries to do is, he tries to, uh, he, he comes to God he, and on our behalf and he says, look at all these sins that he's done. Look at, look, he's, he committed adultery over here, he lied over here, he, he's done all this over here, and he, he brings up all your past sins, and when God sees those sins, what does he see? He sees the blood of his son. They're covered. Amen. We see there's a garment. Number one, the garment he wore that was designed. His father loves him so much, he designed a garment just for him. He designed something just for him. Did you know that God has already met all of your needs? He's designed something just for you. Not only did he give his son to die on an old rugged cross, for every dirty, rotten, no good, sorry thing you've ever done. And He died on that old rugged cross for your sins. Shed His sinless blood so that you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. Not only has God given us His only Son, but God has designed for us and He's met all of our needs and needs and provided for us a life. Right. We see the garment He wore that was designed. This is the garment that represents... The believers change. The Bible says in the book of Romans, says 3, verse number 22, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all, them that believe, for there is no difference. It says, unto all and upon all. The righteousness of God. That word justification. Who's ever heard they said justification? It's like, just if I haven't sinned. Who's ever heard that before? Okay, there's another one. God has declared me righteous. Amen. When He sees me, He sees the blood of His Son. I try to add this into every message. This is a message tonight that's applied mainly to Christians. But if you're here tonight and you've never been saved, God has a cover, God has a coat, God has a garment designed just for you. He wants to clothe you in His righteousness. He wants to change you from the inside out. This world will change you from the outside. This world can, can do a lot to you, but only God can give you peace. Only He can give you joy. Only He can show you what real love is. We see Joseph's father, Jacob, Israel, he loved them dearly. God loves His children dearly. We're the apple of His eye. He loves us. Number two, we see this same garment, but number two, the garment he wore when he was despised. Number one, we see the garment he wore that was designed. That was the garment that represents the believer's change. And then number two, the garment he wore when he was despised. This is the garment that represents the world's cruelty. Now think about it for a minute. Jacob loves Joseph. He designed him his own coat of many colors. And boy, he just cherishes his son. And because he loves his son so much, and because him and his son have fellowship one with another, Joseph is an honest, an honest boy. What does he do? He gives his father an evil report. He doesn't go tattletale. He just tells him the truth. He's an honest boy. He, he dreams a dream. He's just telling the truth. And what happens? His brothers, his own family, his fellow man, they hate him. They despise him. You see, God has changed us. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, and that ye put on the new man. That's the righteousness of God. When you're saved, Baptized by the Holy Spirit of God. Covered in the blood of Christ. Your name's written down in the book of life. Immediately, you have fellowship with God the Father. You have an eternal home in heaven. You have a hatred for sin. You have a hunger for righteousness. And you get close to God. You have a fellowship with God. And God changes you. It makes an honest man, makes an honest woman out of you. And what happens? The world can't stand it. You think the world loves you, you should turn the news on. The world hates you for that. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 22, it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He lasted three and a half years. If he were to come now instead of then, he lasted, he lasted about three and a half weeks. Okay, they, they hated him then. Three and a half years, his, his ministry was public. Three and a half years, they hung him on a cross, they killed him, they hated him. But he was born to die. He, he died willingly. But he said, you'll be hated for my name's sake. We see, this represents the garment he wore when he was despised. This garment represents the world's cruelty. Look, if you would, at uh, verse, number, verse number 8, chapter number 37. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? This is, um, they're talking about his dream that he had. Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and his words. They couldn't stand Joseph. They hated Joseph. Paul said, Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I hate to tell you this, but you can't serve God and man. You're either going to be loved by one and hated by the other. That's, how, that's what the Bible tells us. You can't be in fellowship with God and be loved by the world. It's impossible. We see that Joseph here, uh, he was despised so much. Look if you would in verse number 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Now I'm not going to stay here for a while, but now they're beginning to mock him. Okay, they despise him. They're mocking him now. And if you read on in these verses, they end up stripping him of his coat of many colors, cast him into a pit, and they're going to kill him. But Reuben tries to talk some sense into him. And then Judah, I believe, ends up, uh, when, when Reuben's not around, Judah ends up talking to his brothers and they end up selling him to the Ishmaelites. They sell their own brother. They just want to get rid of him. They're tired of him. They're tired of this dreamer. They're tired of this boy who's honest. They're tired of this boy that um, when, when they behave the way they want to, when their father asks them, uh, what happened? He tells their father the truth. They're tired of that. Okay, He's a godly boy. He's an obedient boy. He honors his father. They're tired of that. We see the garment he wore that was despised. Number three, we see the garment he wore that deceived. Look at Genesis chapter number 39 and verse number 1. The Bible says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person, and well favored. We see number three, the garment he wore that deceived. This is the garment that represents his character. We're going to read on. Look what it says in verse number seven. Young men, listen now, okay? Young people, listen. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house. 
and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he backed anything from, from me, but thee, because thou art his wife, how, thee, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she called him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. We see the garment he wore that deceived. Who did it deceive? If you read, if you read down here in uh, verse number 21 or so, verse number uh, 20 it says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoner were bound, and he was there in the prison. And what she did when she took that, when she took that garment, she showed it to Potiphar and she began to stereotype Joseph. She said, look at this Hebrew boy, look what he did when no one was around. He tried to come in here and he tried to take advantage of me and she began lying on him. And that garment that Potiphar had in his hand deceived him. Joseph didn't deceive him, but his wife deceived him. His wife lied on him. What happened? We see here, Joseph, this represents his character. The garment that represents his character. Look at verse number... Look at um, in, in verse number um, 20, I believe. I'm losing my, my place here. But anyhow, he comes to the house and he's by himself. And it's just her there. Who you are when nobody is around, that's your true character. That's where integrity sets in. Sure, he had a good name. He had a good testimony. He had a good reputation around Potiphar, around Potiphar's men, around his servants. But now he's all alone. He's all alone in that house. And Potiphar's wife comes up to him. See, he had character. And when what did he do? He grabbed onto his garment. What did he do? He ran. As Christians, we need to run from sin. We need to flee away from sin. Don't think anything is above you. Or don't think you're above any sin that you would never do that. Never think that. Flee from that sin. Run from that sin. Never put yourself in a bad situation. Joseph realized, hey, i got to get out of here. And he ran. It showed his character. But we see Potiphar was deceived. That garment represents how he was deceived. I'm sure uh, Joseph was mislabeled, wasn't he? He was mislabeled because of that garment. He said, look, look at this. He said, look, that, that little Hebrew boy that you bought. Look, he tried to take advantage of me. She mislabeled him. Isn't that what the world tries to do to us today? They, they mislabel us. They put us into one group. Well, oh, there's those, those hateful people. They don't believe in gay marriage. They're, they're hateful people. Or they're, they're, those people over there, those, those Christian people. They, they mislabel us. They mislabel Joseph as somebody who tried to take advantage of his, of his master's wife. We see the garment he wore that deceived. This garment represents his character. Then we see the garment he wore when he was in the dungeon. Look at Genesis chapter 40. In verse number 1. The garment he wore when he was in the dungeon. Genesis chapter 40, verse number 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against the two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and served them, and they continued to seize him in war. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison." 
Now let's look at this verse here. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me them, I pray you. We see the garment he wore when he was in the dungeon. This garment represents his commitment. His commitment. If we're not careful, the Bible says it rains on the just and on the unjust. And if we're not careful, when things don't go our, our way, it can affect something. Something called attitude. You notice Joseph didn't say, well, I don't care. I'm in prison too. I'm having a bad day. You know, He could have just <clears throat> looked the other way. But what did he say? He said, don't dreams belong to God? Don't, doesn't that belong to God? See here, he's committed. He was still in fellowship with God. He didn't understand. He even says in these verses, he even tells after he interprets the dream uh, for the butler and the baker, the butler ends up getting restored. He, he puts those grapes into Pharaoh's cup, you know, and then the, the poor uh, baker, you know, he gets, he gets hanged. And so Joseph tells that butler, God interprets that dream for Joseph. Joseph tells him, said, hey, I didn't do anything wrong to get down here. He wasn't complaining. He just said, remember me when you get out. But he wasn't complaining. He was committed. Regardless of what situation Joseph was in, he showed his commitment to God. There's no way he could have interpreted that dream if he was not in fellowship with God. Uh, being a preacher, I don't know if there's, if there's any other preachers in here. I don't know that or not, but... You can't get up here and preach unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't do it unless you're, you're close to God. Joseph showed his commitment. He showed his, his attitude toward the Lord. We see the garments he had on. Even though he was wearing the garments in the dungeon, a prisoner's garment. Okay, He once had such a beautiful robe of many colors, and it was stripped off of him, and he was thrown into a pit. And then he was sold to Potiphar. And then he, he uh, prospered in his house. And then he was lied on. And then he was thrown back into another pit. But yet he still had a good attitude. Boy, some of us, we, we get mad if uh, our cell phone's not in service. You know, we get mad. We're, we're just in a sour mood because, uh, you know, uh, the, the sports game didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. But here's Joseph. You see, all that he went through, he still had a good attitude. He was still committed. We see the garment he wore, number one, that was designed. The garment he wore that was um, the garment he wore when he was despised. The garment he wore that deceived. The garment he wore when he was in the dungeon. And then we see the garment he wore when he was delivered. Flip over to uh, Genesis chapter number forty-one. Look at verse number fourteen. Some years have passed. Pharaoh has just had a dream. God has, uh, he has inter he's not interpreted this dream, but he has uh, given Pharaoh the vision and dream about the famine, the, the, the seven years famine. There's going to be uh, seven years of, of plenteous harvest, and then there's going to be seven years of famine. And Pharaoh has this dream about the seven uh, ill kind and the seven... Well, kind, how those ill kind, those, they ate them then about the dream about the corn, okay? And he doesn't understand. He brings all these guys in. He brings all these men in to interpret this dream. And the butler says, well, I know somebody who can interpret it for you. And look, if you would, at uh, verse number 14, Genesis chapter number 41, verse number 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved, him, shaved himself and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. 
God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. If you read these verses, it'll tell you, for time's sake, we're not going to. But come down, verse number 32. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the, in the cities. And the food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. There was no one in Egypt other than Pharaoh who had a higher name than Joseph after this point. And he changed his garment after he was delivered out of the dungeon. We see the garment he wore when he was delivered. This is the garment that represents his consistency. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. There are times, man, you feel like you've been in the dungeon. You pretty much you get thrown in a pit and you get out and things start to work out for you then you get thrown in the dungeon. Anybody ever feel like that before? The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. His consistency. He stayed close to God. We need consistent Christians. Thank God for Wednesday night Christians. Thank God for Christians who go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Thank God for Christians who read their Bibles. We need Christians with consistency for this lost and dying world. We see the garment he wore when he was departed. Then we see the garment he wore that showed his devotion. So years have passed, and Joseph gets married. He, he has sons. He names one of them about... His situation about how he was brought out of a, a bad situation and, and God given him uh, many things and he's, he's blessed them. And then there comes some, some people who before had done Joseph wrong. Well, it was his brothers. And if you, you read these, these verses, if you, you go back and, and read these chapters, you'll find that Jacob finds out that there is during this time of famine that Joseph had talked about, Jacob finds out that there's corn in, in Egypt. So he sends his sons. And Joseph, when he first sees his sons, they don't recognize Joseph, their brother, the one they despise, the one they did wrong. And to make a long story short, Joseph is wearing the garments of a governor now. He's wearing the garments of somebody very, very important. And if he wanted to, he could pay those men back tenfold, couldn't he? They threw him into a pit. Imagine what he could have done to them. Imagine what he could have done to their sons. Imagine what he could have, the, the wrath he could have, you know, to try to get them back. He's got the, the clothes on as a governor. His, his garments are different now than they were back when they... Strip them and throw them in a pit. We see the garments he wore to show his devotion. This garment represents his choices. Look, if you would, in, in uh, chapter number 45. It says, Then Joseph cannot refrain himself. They've gone back and forth for a while. Um, he, uh, he took one of them captive. They came for corn. He put the money back in their, their sacks. They went home. They had to bring Benjamin back with them. You all know the story. He ended up putting his cup in Benjamin's sack and said that he has to stay with me. And his brother Judah just poured his heart out to him and just, just pled with him. And now Joseph can't take it anymore. It says, And Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. 
And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. If Joseph had leaned unto his own understanding, he would have been defeated way back when he was thrown into that prison. He probably would have never forgave his brothers. If he would... The opportunity presented to him, he probably would have done wrong to his brothers. But Joseph, the entire time, he trusted in the Lord. He had a choice to make. And immediately, he forgave his brothers. And he told them, he said, God had a plan. This whole thing worked out for God's glory. And then last of all, this is my last point. My time really got away from me tonight. This is my last point. We see... The garment he wore in his death. If you look at uh, Genesis, you flip over to Genesis chapter 50 and you read the last couple verses there. And this is, these are the garments that represent his conclusion. Job said, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Book of James says, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. And here lies Joseph, he's embalmed, and he's wrapped in fresh new garments in his new tomb. And everything that was done in his life is over. He lived over a hundred years over, just like that. Before we knew it, our, before we know it, our lives are going to be over. And what will, will we be able to say we've done for the Lord? I want to read you my title here, but I want to go back over, look back at these garments. Number one. We see the garment he wore that was designed. That's the garment that represents the believer's change. Number two, the garment he wore when he was despised. This is the garment that represents the world's cruelty. Number three, the garment he wore that that deceived. This garment represents his character. We see the garment he wore when he was in the dungeon. This is the garment that represents his commitment. We see the garment he wore... When he was delivered, this is the garment that represents his consistency. And then we see the garment he wore that showed his devotion. That's the garment that represents his choices. And then the garment he wore in his death. This represents his conclusion. Title of my message tonight, two words. Do right. Bob Jones said, do right and if the, if the stars fall, do right. My son, his name is... Coburn James Carmichael, and Coburn is from my side of the family, but his middle name, James, is from my mother's side of the family, my, my grandpa. His name was Moses James Clay. And how many Greensboro people we got in here? Anybody? You got two. <laughs> Anybody else? Who's heard of Cone Hospital? Okay, there you go. All right. My grandpa, Moses James Clay, was named after Moses H. Cone. Okay, and you know how family stories sometimes get a little out of hand and they stretch things, but I've been told that my great-grandfather was friends with the Cone family and actually helped build Cone Hospital. Well, Moses Cone, his brother, him, uh, Caesar Cone, they pretty much, they were the entrepreneurs of the Cone I mean, just they, they had all kinds of businesses, empire pretty much. I mean, these guys are very successful. Their father, Hermann Kahn, okay, was from Germany. He was a 17-year-old immigrant who came to America, changed his name to Hermann Kahn. Before he left, 
his brother-in-law wrote him a letter. If you have the time to look it up, I really, really recommend it. His brother-in-law wrote him a letter. He was on his way to America. He had pretty much nothing. Okay? And he was going to live with his sister and her husband. And his brother-in-law in that letter gave him advice about being a man, about being honest, about staying true to his faith, about not letting uh, people make fun of him, not, not worrying about those, not, worrying, uh, not changing his character. Just good advice every young man needs. And at the end of that letter, he said, Do right, trust God, and fear no man. Do right. When the world despises us, do right. When we're uh, lied on by the world or we're mislabeled, do right. When we're down in the lowest parts, uh, the, the lowest we've ever been, do right. When God gets us out of that valley and puts us on the mountain and it just seems like everything's going the way we want it to and He's just blessing us beyond compare, do right. When we have opportunities and the devil comes and he tempts us and, and he brings up uh, an old wound or he brings up something where we can maybe pay somebody back or get someone back or get even with somebody and please our flesh, do right what the Bible says. How many is reading their Bible through this year so far? Okay. How do we know when to do right? We need to read His Word. That's what tells us to do right. There is no gray area. There is no middle ground to sin. Amen. Sin is sin. We need to do right. Joseph did right. He did right in Potiphar's house. He did right in the dungeon. He did right uh, and uh, while he was ruling for Pharaoh, he did all he did right all the way to his grave. That's when he did right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, dear Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all these many, all, all your many blessings, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for uh, these good people here tonight. I pray, Lord, for just one person here, even that was able to take uh, your message, dear God, and get some encouragement from it, dear Lord. Pray, dear Lord, maybe uh, a Christian who's just uh, needed that encouragement, dear Lord, just needed that. That push from you, dear Lord, just to continue on doing right, dear God, and keeping you first, Lord, and just staying in your word, dear God, and just, uh, Lord, being a light for this lost and dark world. I pray, dear God, if there's anyone here um, who uh, does not know you as their Lord and personal Savior, has never come uh, to, to repent of their sins, dear God, that your Holy Spirit would convict them and show them their need for a Savior. We thank you, Lord, for all, for all that you've done, that all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.